if someone is not fighting for justice, is not a, a decent philosopher. You have to, to have a clear vision of justice in order to be able to philosophize. But who knows the truth to be able to judge accordingly? Nobody knows the truth. What's the truth in the universe? You just wrote a book about what is philosophy. So answer the question, what is philosophy? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, yes, I am asking the question. Uh, the title of the book is Philosophy is Three Dots. That means um, it's an answer, um, a reply, in the famous old question about what philosophy is. From this point of view, uh, late in my philosophical uh, life, because I teach philosophy for the last uh, 30 years, I decided to... In the University of Cyprus. At the University of Cyprus, yes. And um, I decided to provide the public and my students as well with a reply to the answer, to the question, uh, what philosophy really is. And um, uh, this book, um, around 250 pages, is, let's say, a multiple uh, reply to the question. Because it is not an easy question to ask and uh, not an easy question to answer or to reply. From this point of view, I had to write a book. Uh, and in order to say in a few words what philosophy is, I am going to uh, tell you about um, my adventure. Uh, in my, let's say, trying to answer the question. Uh, I really tried to find uh, the main point or the common point of uh, the philosophers from the beginning of time. Uh, what's their common point? What's the common point that, let's say, unites and uh, makes them philosophers? The pre-Socratic philosophers, Heraclitus and Socrates, they are so different. Uh, Heraclitus uh, wrote a book on nature, but uh, Socrates was never interested in nature. He was only interested in uh, um, interrogating uh, people uh, of Athens. Uh, Heraclitus was not interested in something like that. Uh, he was lonely and he wanted to stay lonely without any people around him. He wanted to philosophize alone, not Socrates. So both are philosophers. Both have the same identity or the same name. Why? This was my adventure to answer why to answer this question. And uh, finally, after around 10 years, because it took me around 10 years to write this book, I realized that the common point of uh, the classical philosophers, at least of 25 uh, centuries, is their philosophical intention. No matter what their style, huh? of writing, of, of, of talking, maybe, uh, the philosophical intention is the same. And their philosophical intention uh, was, for all of them, to describe the content of their mind. But the philosophical mind is not the common one. The philosophical mind is a source of ideas of original ideas. Uh, what is, let's say, the method of producing these ideas? Uh, is it something that is being taught at the universities? Uh, can I be a student of philosophy? Can I be taught from a philosopher and become a philosopher myself? And suddenly my mind is going to produce original ideas? Yes and no. Uh, 
Yes, from the point of view that uh, philosophical teaching is necessary in order for someone to realize that the mind can produce original ideas. But if the mind cannot do it, it is not going to do it. So we have to, to have together a certain philosophical mind and a philosophical teaching and philosophical procedure of learning how to philosophize. Both of the factors are necessary. So, in this book, in the second part of this book, I describe the procedure of how philosophy is being taught and learned. And uh, my adventure uh, has come to an end. Uh, now I am sure what I am talking about, but you are going to ask me after 30 years. Huh? Uh, it uh, took you 30 years to be sure about what you are talking about. Yes, I want to be sincere with you. Because all these 30 years I was exploring the philosophical texts, uh, so different uh, philosophical texts, in order to find the thread, the common thread that goes through them. Uh, the philosophical thread that makes, as I told you, uh, very different uh, philosophers between themselves to be called philosophers. And now I am at your disposition to answer any other philosophical question or not of yours. Yes, but you didn't answer the question, what is philosophy? Philosophy is <laughs> about the philosophical mind producing original ideas. And the originality of these ideas is a matter of judging the ideas as original. But in order to judge them as original, you have to judge them under a philosophical perspective. And the philosophical perspective is multifarious. Let's uh, remind us a few philosophical topics. What is knowledge? What um, have I to do in order to be, uh, let's say, a decent person? What have I to do in order to be uh, happy? Uh, what have I to do in order to make other people happy, in order not to harm them, in order to be just with them? What is justice? What is beauty? Uh, what is nature? What is my mind? These are difficult, uh, difficult and different philosophical uh, questions that uh, a philosopher who is going to be proud about himself tries, tries to answer, if not all of them, some of them. So I cannot talk about bananas and no, be a philosopher? No, and I cannot talk about the soil that um, I am used to, to use in order for, let's say, my trees to grow. No, I'm not talking about uh, the matter that has no life in it. So let's say, but I can make a conversation about banana, a philosophical one, right? I am not and sure I'm not uh, unless, um, unless I want to give an example about a philosophical, let's say, issue. Yes, I may try to use the word banana or... Uh, let's say, the image of a banana uh, in order to explain to someone a philosophical question. So a person, a person that watch a banana and sit in the table and thinks, does banana have feelings? He's not a philosopher? Uh, well, uh, there is an he, axiom not... here, there is a principle that uh, if we are going to talk about feelings, we are going to talk about living human beings or living animals. In order for, for something to have feelings, the presupposition is to have life. 
Hmm? No, let's say, dead body uh, has feelings. No fruit has feelings. When I eat a fruit, it, it doesn't sense anything. We don't know. Well, uh, my, let's say, philosophical principle is that uh, the matter that uh, has no life in it uh, has no feelings. You may think the opposite, and we may have a conversation between us. In that order to be a philosophical conversation. Yes, yes, yes. This, philo- this conversation is going to be philosophical between us. Not in order to convince each other, but in order to make uh, one another to understand what I mean and what you mean. But like, if, if I want to explain what I mean about uh, YouTube to you, mm-hmm. like I will teach you how, how YouTube works, isn't that a philosophical in a way a conversation? Well, the conversation would be philosophical if you were taking the task to explain to me what is the spirit behind what you do. What, let's say, is your intention? So we need to be to be into philosophical territories, we need to talk about feelings, we need to talk about theories, we need to talk about decisions, perception, we need to perceptions, see, ideas. We need to basically see things from higher point of view. Yes. So if yes. we're seeing things from a higher point of view, then we're philosophizing. You are right. You are right. You have to have a distance. If not higher, uh, somewhere in a distance. Because uh, when someone thinks philosophically, has to, to have in mind the many dimensions of uh, the thing he's talking about or he's thinking about. Because as an axiom, as a philosophical axiom, uh, many dimensions are to be discovered when I think philosophically about anything. So I have to take a distance. I have to be in a distance. Okay. I kind of understood. But uh, now all the time in the previous years, philosophers, I don't think they were that taken seriously by the public, but I think now in the 21st century and moving into the artificial intelligence world, I think they are going to be probably one of the most important people in the world. Well, uh, I want to live enough in order to see it. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think about this? Do you think, uh, because it's the first time that actually your job have an appliance in real life, like Oh no, artificial intelligence, have consciousness. How, what should we do? Should we give him rights? Should we put him in jail? Should we lock him? Yes. So yes. all this stuff become real life problem. Yes, you are right. And this is ethics. This is philosophical ethics. This is philosophical and applied ethics. From this point of view, you are right. But I am not really sure if the public knows that these issues are philosophical ones. Because for the last uh, two centuries, philosophy is a matter of academy. Um, Philosophy is a matter of professional, let's say, philosophers or academic philosophers, a matter of philosophers who who teach at the universities. Okay. And from this point of view, uh, you cannot really be sure about what a philosopher is be, because he, he's or she is far away from you. He's, let's say, locked in a university. Uh, but uh, this is true for the last two centuries. Uh, from the antiquity on till the 18th or 19th century, philosophers were uh, people uh, walking in the public. They were known as philosophers. Uh, Very few of them were academic philosophers, of the classical philosophers, I mean. Very few of them were academic philosophers or professional philosophers. They were, uh, let's say, philosophers as writers, 
as interlocutors, as people who uh, were thinking, let's say, more or more seriously than the others. The uh, uh, contemporary examples you... you or no more, not seriously, maybe deeply. <laughs> deeply, <laughs> yes. But uh, I wanted to say that the very interesting examples that you brought uh, on the table, uh, the philosophical examples or the examples of, let's say, the dimensions that philosophical thought could take are contemporary ones. That means are, let's say, issues that we are interested in because they are serious ones, because they are serious issues. And we cannot think of them or about them, uh, let's say, as having a, an amusing conversation and uh, not wanting to come to a conclusion, but uh, let's say wanting to, to pass our time. No, philosophical thought is not uh, thinking uh, uh, in order to uh, be in, let's say, in, in, um, in a, a position of uh, having fun only. You can have fun with philosophical thought, but when you think seriously about what you are thinking, Okay. That's big fun. That's big fun, yes. That's big fun. Otherwise, uh, we are not having fun because we are going to be tired. Okay. Uh, talking nonsense. Yes, we can, we can talk nonsense, but after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we are going to be bored. When thinking philosophically, we are not going to be bored. We can't talk not everybody, though. <laughs> not, not everybody. Yes, you are right. But if we are talking about, let's say, important matters, we are going to have uh, the, the disposition necessary to come together and be with each other. When, I, when I'm having philosophical discussion, let's say, on the table with my brother or something and my other brother is like sleeping and we're, we're so passionate so he's like so bored he's playing on his phone so it's, it's it's i don't think when i don't i'm not sure what you are saying is completely true yes yes you are right but if let's say we have the philosophical intention to make other people to listen to us we always have, let's say, this feeling or uh, this want to make the, other, uh, the others understand what we say, what we are talking about. So uh, we are becoming creative. Hmm? We are asking questions like Socrates. We not only, let's say, trying to express, we're not only trying to express our thought, but we want the others to listen to us. So we are asking questions. What do you think about this? Do you think it's an issue uh, for discussion or not? Why? Is it important or not? Uh, you are a man of, let's say, publicity. And you are always, I, I really think that you are always confronting the issue of uh, the spiritual rights of your work. What, 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 what is this? What is, let's say, the rights uh, one has uh, uh, on uh, his own spiritual production? This is a very important issue and this is a contemporary issue of ours because many means of communicating are in place. You are creating images, you are creating conversations and all the, those creations are yours. 
you are the owner of them. And you are deciding to provide the public with your spiritual work. Okay? So that's a philosophical word. Yes, work. yes. The, the issue of your having rights, hmm? personal and political rights on your work, is a, a very important one. Hmm? This is a philosophical issue. The issue of uh, the justice of the laws that have to do with the spiritual creation, the spiritual work. I want to uh, I want to take a step back and because I, you are from Greece and yes. you are probably one of the most qualified person to talk about the philosopher of uh, of Greece and like how to tell me how philosophy the history of philosophy in a brief way how it it came who was the first one how it evolved and all this stuff and I'm really excited to listen. <laughs> We have already already mentioned Heraclitus. He was a pre-Socratic philosopher. And the Greek philosophy, Greek philosophy started with them, with the pre-Socratic philosophers. Uh, at what time? At uh, sixth uh, century before Christ. Hmm? So to, uh, to almost th- two and a half thousand years ago. Y- yes, yes. Twenty wow. uh, six wow. uh, centuries ago. And um, they were philosophers who talked about the nature and um, somewhat the human nature. But after them, when Socrates uh, got into the philosophical stage and Plato and Aristotle, let's say philosophy became more academic activity, more of an academic activity. And uh, from then on, philosophy is simultaneously a free activity and an academic activity at once. Uh, This thing is very interesting because, uh, as I told you earlier, the last two centuries, philosophy has lost its freedom. Hmm? And uh, it became more or less an academic activity. But in order for philosophy, for philosophers, let's say, to be creative, freedom hmm, is a prerequisite. Uh, That's another philosophical discussion. (laughs) That's another philosophical discussion. (laughs) From this point of view, you better than me, you know what freedom is. Because, let's say, uh, you have to travel a lot. I don't. I have, let's say, to, to stay still on my armchair in order to write my books. Uh, not you. Uh, you may write books, but uh, thanks to your job, hmm, you have to travel a lot. So you, you know better than me Uh, about the dimension of freedom that I don't know as well as you know. Okay. Uh, From this point of view, freedom has many aspects. The philosophical freedom is an aspect of freedom in general. What is philosophical freedom? Philosophical freedom is uh, the right that I have as a philosopher to think whatever I want and to write about it and to express it without having to think what others will think about it. So you think that's a a, a huge advantage, uh, the only way to, for a, for, to progress? For yes. freedom of speech. Yes. And yes. So you are a big advocate of freedom of speech. Yes, I am. And yes, I am. Because otherwise, the philosophical thought cannot grow, cannot blossom. Otherwise, we are going to, to talk about 
the same things with the same words, with the same under the same I- ideas or under the same perspectives, without being able to think something original, something new. But and being able to say things free allows and enables. Yes, yes, us to to offer new ideas, to offer. Uh, let's say, original ideas in order to find the way through a complex contemporary environment. You you said it before, and you are putting a lot of value in original ideas. Yes, 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 you are right. What is the distinction between an original idea and a copy idea? Because, let's say, I'm a YouTuber, yes. and I drew a lot of big inspiration from other people, And when you watch my videos, they kind of feel similar structure and similar concepts. But, and where do you say that's Kobe and where do you say that's original? And well, please offend me. You are making, you are <laughs> making, yes, you are making those, idea, those ideas yours. You are presenting them hmm, uh, through uh, using your unique spirit. No one else, as far as I know, does the same thing with you. No one else is a, is a YouTuber with uh, philosophical interests. No, no one else is a YouTuber who wants to discuss with a philosopher at the same level. And you, you are managing to do it. From this point of view, you are uh, a, a, an original person who, let's say, uses ideas of others, but you are not stealing them. You are, they are, these, these ideas are when, when, inspiration. When, when you are stealing them, what, when you are making exactly the same thing with your face, but even if when you make the exact same thing with the other guy, mm-hmm. you can't. You are doing it your way. Yeah, because it's your face. You said something different. You are put so there is, there is. This is where my point, was, my question is: everything is original in a way. Yes and no, because many people steal others' ideas, and uh, this is the issue of uh, spiritual rights hmm? on our work. On intellectual Not rights, probably. on intellectual property, okay? And uh, from this point of view, we have to discern between those who steal ideas and either present them as their own or always talking about others' ideas without having an original idea on their own and between Uh, the way of doing things or thinking about things that makes me a unique person. Yes, I teach many philosophers of the classical era. I teach the Prosocratics. I teach Plato, Socrates, Spinoza, Descartes. But when I teach them, I am telling the students that this is Descartes. And let's try together to find out what is original Descartes. And let's try to, to make original thoughts about the originality of Cartesian thoughts. Hmm? Otherwise, I am, let's say, a parrot who uh, uh, talks uh, using the words of others And only that. No, this is not philosophy. So basically, also reasoning, you're saying, reasoning about, and having an explanation, and thinking deeply about that, even if almost the same, when yes. you have a reason to do it, then it's original. Absolutely, absolutely. You have to, to be or to feel as an original thinker in order to be able to deal with original thinkers. But you feel as an original thinker when you want to think about something and think originally. 
on it. That's a very interesting thing that you said because I've been through a lot of rooms with very clever people and what they are is not a room of successful people, it's a room of original thinkers. Mm-hmm. That they have a reason that mm-hmm. they're doing something. That's right, that's right. They have an, a reason to be around, to talk, to be heard, to be teachers. What, what is more valuable hmm, in our society? Sex. <laughs> <laughs> This is valuable as well. <laughs> But what is valuable for the society? <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Sex is valuable, but for me, for you, for our partners, okay? But not for the society. Of course it's valuable, because without sex there is no society. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> Evolution. Of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> but philosophy is about having fun hmm? together with others. Uh, in our adventure of exploring um, the deepest corners of our ability for thinking. Uh, because it's an ability, Phidias. Hmm? It's an ability that um, one has and which um, grows over the time, which blossoms over the time, when original thoughts come into my mind and deal with them, and I deal with them in a way that every time I think, let's say, even the same thought, I am in a position to find out something different in it. Yes. And different use, let's say. I am living my life as a philosopher like everyone else. And many times, Many philosophical thoughts come into my mind, pass through my mind in order to interpret a situation of life. And I'm feeling privileged, you know. It's so sexy that feeling. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> sexy. Uh, I'm feeling privileged because uh, I am in a position through philosophy to interpret a situation in my life and let's say, feel calm. And the calmness. By the way, one thing that I sense, guys, I talk with this guy and he's probably the most calm guy I ever, <laughs> he speaks slowly, he's calm. And probably you sense it, you relax when you are with him. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The calmness is one of my properties. And, um, Uh, I have to admit that this property uh, comes uh, f- from philosophy. Um, I am not uh, a, a nervous person, but philosophy teaches me to be calm and to be patient in order to understand, in order to think seriously or deeply or thoroughly about any issue that uh, I come uh, across throughout my philosophical or my normal life. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Greece and like for you to tell me some of the stories, how it evolved and like how it looked uh, uh, in 2,500 years ago, how everyday life of philosophers looked, kind of what they did and like how it evolved and all this stuff. But I wanted, when you were saying all this stuff, I was thinking um, that when you said that when you uh, see the philosophical thought and you interpret it, how beautiful the feeling is, I was thinking that one of the strongest bonds that you can do with people, um, like I felt that my best friend and how close we are because we are intellectually close. So the strongest bond that you can be form in life, in my experience, is intellectual bond with someone. Yes, of course. Uh, we met just today and I am already feeling that I have an intellectual bond with you. Only you are feeling, I don't feel that that I have an intellectual bond with you yet. I'm joking. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, why? 
Okay. Uh, uh, we are talking about uh, half an hour hmm? or uh, something more or less. But we are feeling that we have something to share. And that was the only way to happen this, let's say, marvelous thing. Uh, because, because we feel something and we want to share. Something. Yes, because we share something very valuable. We are sharing our common enterprise to understand. Okay? We are, let's say, partners in this marvelous adventure to understand our thoughts. And our thoughts are our personality. Uh, our thoughts have to do with our physical being. We are thinkers. Uh, and this is a matter of our physical being. We are not thinkers as, uh, let's say, remotely thinking beings uh, who cannot communicate with each other. No. We are saying this Uh, let, let's say, physical strength to undertake the adventure to think seriously or to think deeply. And this is an intellectual as well as a, a physical bond. You see, intellectual and physical, the same place, together. And only philosophy can do this. Nothing else. And perhaps... Uh, music. Hmm? We are sharing uh, feelings about a, 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 a piece of music. Hmm? But who says that uh, philosophy is not an art as well? Philosophy is an art. Philosophy is the art of thinking. No other, let's say, uh, art of thinking can compare itself with philosophy. Philosophy is the the art of the arts of thinking okay because uh, it, it limits itself in the limits it positions itself to itself but it uh, overcomes the limits in order to find itself in another dimension and this is magic Where is the other dimension? Wherever it is, wherever philosophy can go in order to find out about these other dimensions, not only dimension, but dimensions. We philosophers have the feeling that, as Socrates had the same feeling, that uh, the more we think, the more we have to think in order to protect our previous property of thinking. <laughs> the more we think, the more we have to think in order to protect our previous thinking. That's a good quote. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And we always have the feeling that the most, uh, let's say, rewarding feeling is that I can admire the nature in front of me without having to think anything. This immediate contact with other human beings, with the nature, with animals, without any, let's say, disturbing thinking coming into the way in order to disturb us from this contact is the most valuable property that one takes from philosophy, hmm? that one is privileged to have thanks to philosophical thinking. You think that uh, we're going away from the question of the Greece and stuff, but we're going to come back. You think other people that are not philosophizing cannot have this benefit and enjoy no, their uh, no, life? No, no. no, no. But it's like they are not able to perceive art in a way. So no, 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 no. From a point of view, as Nietzsche uh, was saying, phil philosophy is for everyone 
and for no one. Hmm? Philosophy is for no one and for everyone. Philosophy f- is for no one if no one manages to be able to be in this close contact without being disturbed by any other, let's say, common thoughts. What's a common thought? Oh, well, I am hungry. What I'm going to eat afterwards? I offered you a drink earlier on and you told me, not let it be. Now we have job to do or, or uh, I want to... I said we have more important things. Oh, more important things to do. <laughs> okay, okay. From this point of view, uh, my, my offer was um, lesser than you know, the expectations you had about our meeting. Okay. This is the way someone discerns or uh, differentiates differentiates in his life the important from the non-important. But my question was, do we have, let's say, let's say we are philosophers and we are trying to understand the world around us. Do we have more joy in our life than other people, you think? We may. We, we may, may ha- have we may more not. <laughs> joy because uh, through our trying to overcome the obstacles that disturb our procedure of thinking, we are getting used to overcome any other obstacle in our life. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because in our lives, we always have to do it with with obstacles. So it's a byproduct that our uh, happy life of philosophy... It's a byproduct. And uh, we owe this byproduct to our uh, intention to think what is important for us, no matter what. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to clarify it. I'm going to own it. Nothing is going to owe me. Hmm? Nothing is going to be my master. Nothing and no one is going to be the source of my displeasure if I do not want it. You can be uh, the source of my displeasure under one condition. I am the one who is going to allow you to be the source of my, of my displeasure. Yes. Otherwise, you are not going to, to do it. It's very, very, very hard. Um, it's very fun in my life for, for a person to make me, uh, or for a situation to make me. I'm so excited by everything. So mm-hmm. it, because whatever, out of a byproduct of all this philosophizing or whatever, mm-hmm. so a person dies, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a person, mm-hmm. <laughs> I face. Uh, a different pro- problem. I did a previous challenge in, I didn't eat food for 30 days. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. So uh, I was, it was very difficult. And I was, in a way, I was enjoying, uh, I was like, oh my God, it's, I have no f- food now. I have no energy to do nothing. I'm cold. I was enjoying the suffering. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard for when, but, Well, I think we are, we are the lucky ones because we, as a byproduct of our nature and our DNA, we have this benefit because it's difficult to make us upset or to not make us happy. It's very yes. difficult to make a philosopher be unhappy or something. Yes, yes, it's difficult <laughs> because we are always struggling for justice, as a matter of fact. For justice. For justice, yes. We are sincere people who want justice to be a state 
of uh, our mind and the state, the situation in the world or, or in the social environment around So us. do you see a co- that being a common phenomenon between philosophers and the old philosophers to, to fight for justice? Yes, of course, of course. If someone is not fighting for justice, for justice, is not a, a decent philosopher. If he, even if he is called a philosopher, you have you have to to have a clear vision of justice in order to be able to philosophize. But what is justice anyway? <laughs> what is justice? What is anyway? right and what is wrong? How you yes, yes, things? you are right. You are right. But uh, uh, we have to be able not to give a definition of justice, but to 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 come across, uh, let's say, injustice and uh, say that this is unjust. This is not right. And what what is not right? What is unjust? Let me give you an example. You have an adult in front of a child. And... Uh, This adult is thinking improperly hmm, about this child. And uh, he sees it it as a weak creature that he uh, can exploit it the way way he or she wants. Is it just or not? For me, it isn't unjust. And if I... If I am to defend someone, I am not going to defend the adult. I'm I'm going to defend the child. And this struggle to defend the right party is a matter of justice, is a matter of thinking about justice and fighting about justice. Your own perception of justice, because yes, everyone's own perception of justice. Because some people might uh, might believe that justice is a different thing than what is for you. So, if they are following to that, maybe I, I agree with you. If they are following their justice moral compass, let's say. Yes. Otherwise, we were not going to have to 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 create, let's say, the institution of justice. The institution of justice exists be- because w- we have to come uh, up with a clear idea of justice. Because some people have to be defended in front of others. Hmm? Otherwise, Uh, the human beings would have, let's say, um, disappear from the earth we are living on or in many, many years ago. Hmm? Some people were the defenders of the just ones. That's why we are still alive. That's why we are still existing. It, it's very interesting idea. I'm, I'm just trying to... Uh, me, I have... I'm, I'm going a lot of directions with the, this idea. Of course, yes, we, we should fight for justice, but like... and For example, who am I to judge what? <laughs> if n- if not you, the judge himself or herself, because we have just ju- judge judges, official let's say judges. But who, who 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 knows the truth to be able to judge accordingly? Nobody knows the truth. What's the truth in the universe? The truth. So is- <laughs> we're just maybe f- we're justice for. Humans, you have to put a goal for humans to thrive. Then, yes, we can talk according to that goal. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, we're talking about justice because we have a common goal. But what is the goal? What is the truth here to be able to uh, take action? The truth is that 
everyone who uh, wants to harm others hmm? and thinks that this is the right thing to do is not a just uh, man or woman. I, 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 I don't want to harm others, but I know, for example, when I am harsh with a person and I am putting, um, I'm not kind to him or whatever, that I don't mind not being kind to a person because that can cause him for him to grow. And like that, can, so <laughs> I, I am unkind and, but it doesn't matter because you don't know how the action, a lot of times when you, people are, uh, parents were slapping their kids, it turned out to be one of the best things that happened to them. So you never know what, how is, and because everyone is unique, <coughs> so you you go through their, you, you need to kind of reverse engineer their, so maybe it's good for one person to slap him every day. May, not, it's not politically incorrect, <laughs> but maybe it's that one human being, the one that will, oh, be, it will be good for him. To use. Yes, but if we have to choose, between this and the kind behavior, we are going to to choose. But with the kind behavior, you might hurt that person. So you are judging. We need to just be uh, without come, not be with just a principle. Yes, I know what you mean, and uh, I like this way of thinking because it's a dia- dialectical one. And uh, as a dialectical uh, thinking is a philosophical one. What dialectical means? It means that you take the opposite position of mine in order to give me the opportunity to try more to convince you about what I am mm-hmm. thinking. This is dialectical. So from this point of view, we have... To think. Now we're philosophizing because we're th- doing third person. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, of course. Of course. Now we are philosophizing, of course. Uh, Socrates is, uh, is, uh, is here with us. He's here, he, he, he's here with us and, and he's, our blood. he's very pleased uh, to hear us. Um, w- what I am trying to say is this, that if, let's say, the harsh way is the way to learn anything, we have to be careful because mm. we can never know where the violence stops. Interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowadays, lots of people are being killed because some people kids, hmm? young people, uh, ceased to, let's say, enjoy the violence on them. Look at the United States and you are going to, uh, to take this feeling that I'm using now in order to think the thoughts I am thinking. A 13-year-old kid takes the gun and kills, let's say, 20 people. Why? I suppose uh, he or she ceased to enjoy the violence, a certain violence on his body or on his soul. From this point of view, because we are never sure when violence stops and uh, if it stops hmm, early enough, we have we have to fight. I'm telling it again, we have to fight for a kind behavior which produces, if not the same, hmm, a parallel result hmm, of uh, teaching other people what to do or the way they have to do something, etc. 
as a matter of fact, uh, human beings are um, unwillingly hmm, um, torturing themselves because the human nature is not a better one than those of uh, the, the nature of the animals. Okay. Chimps. Yes. So we are learning through violence as well. Hmm? We are learning through uh, coalitions, through misunderstandings, through war. That's true. But we are struggling to keep the violence in the lesser um, stage we can, in order, the lower stage we can, in order to survive and be able to learn. I love what you said because basically you said we cannot normalize the suffering way of uh, doing because then you don't know how to control it and where it stops and all this stuff. Therefore, we take the kind point which is more harmful and, and then is more able to control it. So less harmful, less harmful, yes. And uh, if you if you if we look at the legislations that um, are being installed in the contemporary world, we are going to constate that uh, they are legislations that try to, let's say, keep people in a safe distance in order to uh, 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 teach people that if you are to come in a close distance, you have to be kind. Otherwise, keep your distance. How they try to keep the legislation try to keep distance? Let's way? let's. Um, By the way, I'm curious to hear your thoughts later about the democracy system. If you yes, like the yes. idea, but let's yes, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Let's take the the legislation of um, how people are to to be behaved. How le, let's say the pupils are to be behaved in the school. In older times, <coughs> teachers uh, were allowed to come in a close contact with pupils, with their pupils. They could even uh, touch them in a violent way. Not today. Hmm? The adults, even though they are teachers, they have to keep a safe... They cannot slap them, no, they cannot they can push know. them. They have to keep a safe distance from their pupils because they are adults and they are kids. And as kids, whatever they do, have not, let's say, the obligations an adult has uh, in their relationship. Hmm? A kid can shout to his teacher, and uh, the kid is not, let's say, punished for his shouting at his teacher. But if a teacher shouts at a pupil and makes it feel, feel that he, he or she is afraid of the teacher, he is responsible or she is responsible for this destroyed relationship. And if the kid, if the pupil goes to the police station and say, tell, says, uh, you know, I am feeling that my teacher today made me feel scared and I want you to punish him, the policemen or women are obliged to uh, search the case, okay? But if a teacher goes to the police station and says, uh, you know, a pupil of mine shouted at me, 
the policeman or the police woman is going to tell him, so what? So what? You are responsible for him or her, not the pupil for you. Yes. That's the difference. So, democracy. Democracy. Well, we are going to go, don't worry guys, we said it. We are going, to, I will promise that we are going to go deep also on the history of philosophy in Greece because I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to teach me because probably you are, you are one of the most qualified people in the world. So, but I hate democracy. You hate democracy. I hate it. I hate it. Maybe there is a better uh, idea. Constitution, yes. For us to do, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Yes. Uh, from the antiquity on, because uh, you want and you are right to talk about ancient philosophers, Aristotle uh, was, let's say, skeptical about the democratic constitution. Why? Because he knew very well that once someone wants to uh, take advantage of the freedom uh, in a democratic state to harm others, he is going to, let's say, be allowed to do it till the time he is going or she is going to be cocked. Okay. From this point of view, the democratic freedoms are, let's say, freedoms that uh, our human civilization uh, has given us and is giving us as a gift. Hmm? It's very important, we talked about it uh, earlier, it's very important to be free to, to talk whatever you want without uh, being afraid that you are going to be caught but the police or let's say, okay. But there is a democratic rule or a democratic principle that is going to be kept as, let's say, a sacred rule. And this is the one. It's nice to be free in a democratic state. But every one of us has to respect the freedom of others to live without disturbing us. We are free to live the way we want to live our lives in a democratic state unless we are willing to disturb others. We are not allowed to disturb others with the freedom we have in a democratic state. Okay. This is, let's say, the, the, fundamental, thing. the fundamental rule of a democracy. Live the way you, you want. Please don't disturb me. I'm not going to judge you. These days are days of... Uh, Pride for the gay people hmm? every May. Okay. I, I am not willing to judge them. Okay. I don't want to judge them. I love the way they are expressing their feelings about their identity. Okay. I didn't have any need for someone to declare his or he, her identity in front of me in order to respect him. No, I, I, I respect them. They didn't have to declare their identity, but I don't have any problem with declaring, with them declaring their identity. From this point of view, I, I am not willing to accept, let's say, any judgment about my sexual activity or sexual identity. Why? It's not a matter of public discussion. 
it's not a matter of um, a, a public controversy. By the way, uh, by the way, I find very interesting your argument because you put things in the fun- because me I'm always trying to optimize things. How we can make this better? Mm. What is this? How we can improve this? And you put things in the fundamental thing, like what is the fundamental thing of democracy? Be allowed to speak freely and not harm others. That's mm-hmm. the fundamental mm-hmm. thing of democracy. And uh, I I fully agree with that fundamental thing, but like how it's happening is like. It's, it's, it's. I don't think it's the best way we can improve or change the whole system. Like for example, I, be, me being able to vote a person every four years, mm-hmm. a person one of the two candidates that I have a choice mm-hmm. that that they are both probably most likely that because of politicians try. They are not bad people, but they're trying to. Um, help the party that they are and all this stuff. So uh, I feel like, and I am just one vote out of one million people here in Cyprus. I feel like this is like um, a game that I'm a joke uh, uh, to be taking part of. Like, it's like, it feels that I have uh, something, I have a right, I have, uh, have, I'm choosing who is ruling me, I'm doing this. And it's like, For me, it's like it, it, it can't be improved. It can. I know very well what you mean. Do we really have choices? If the choices we have are two or three or four people, this is not a choice. This is a, a fake democracy. Welcome, welcome aboard. <laughs> Please have a seat. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts about this? Well, what I'm thinking is. They, that is that we should have more opportunities to, to, to choose. And throughout the, the five years of a presidency, we should have more opportunities to choose, to choose the way uh, we live in, in our society, to choose or to judge the way the institutions in this society work, operate. A democratic state should be inventive all the time and give its citizens um, um, opportunities to judge the state itself. To judge, to give feedback, to, to, give to feedback, participate. To participate, yes, yes. This could be, uh, let's say, the democratic state of the future. But why we why need to call it democratic? Let's call it the... <laughs> the red. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because in principle, the democratic society is the freest of the societies, the more free so far. society of all so far. So yeah. far. Yes, probably on average. Yes. Because we are talking uh, about uh, an organized state. Okay. Yes. A state with Which institutions. Which is, is not the same, they're just a tribe in the Amazon. Yes, of course, of That's course. That's probably f- more free and more... Uh, Even in these tribes, there are uh, people who um, uh, are uh, on the top and others have to no, obey them. Not always. Not always, but in most of the, ca- the cases. I, the, I, I uh, went to the... Um, had some people in Africa is, uh, uh, to make a video with them, which is one of the primal people. And I didn't feel they have like a ruler. I felt that well, that was society. And they were three. all together. Yeah. It was a person that kind of managing the job and like, but it felt like one of them. They felt like, oh, bring me flowers, bring me <laughs> all this stuff. It was uh, just, so I'm not sure if all the societies had like a ruler and all this stuff, but yes. What about the feelings that uh, uh, were expressing between them? Uh, they are friend. They were friendly to each other. Uh, what did did, did, you, did you find out about them? Yes, very friendly and very relaxed, relaxed. and free. Okay, okay. Free out of because they were living <laughs> in the bushes. Yes, of course. So, It's like they didn't have their only concern was how to eat today. Okay, yes. I ate now, I can that's just the, have fun. That's the difference. So, it's 
and this is, comes another to another philosophical topic. Like, are we happier than those uh, uh, tribes that they were before the agricultural revolution that were just hunting and gathering and just being? Uh, no, so <laughs> I I don't think so. I don't think so. Happiness is something is something that is missing in our contemporary democratic societies. You think so? You don't think we are happier? You think we are less happy than uh, uh, those? Uh, absolutely, less less happier than them. And paradox of choice, all this stuff. <laughs> yes, yes, less happier than them, and uh, less calm. Okay, and. Um, Less creative. You will like them. They are calm as you in that time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Not ha- happiness is something that we are looking for, and we rarely find it. Okay. Because of our way of living, because of the societies. We, I don't know about me. Yeah, I find in. it. 20, 30 times a day. <laughs> okay, because you are traveling a lot. Th- this is the reason. I'm not sure if because I'm traveling a lot. I think because I'm naturally, I don't know, have a biochemistry of something like that. I yes, of course, some... of course, that's true. Sorry for the sound. <laughs> 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 that's true, that's true. But um, uh, what is absolutely true is that uh, we have to to live in a society that we, the feeling, the feelings of ours between us are uh, the, the, uh, the feelings of uh, friendship, of cooperation between us and um, um, the feelings of uh, uh, finding uh, in each other uh, the reason to be happy. Okay, I feel that uh, I find in you a reason to be happy. And I am so glad that we are mm, together now. This is the presupposition or the prerequisite. So you agree with me that uh, there is some uh, big challenges with democracy. Overall, we are good, we are better than previous year in organized societies, but there is stuff to be done. And like, you you spoke about some stuff to be done and I'm curious if you can elaborate and explore more because like you said uh, we need more choices, we need more uh, participation, we need more. So, and how do we get there? We just, uh, we just like try different things there because the, and how do you, go live from this system that every the, the good thing about this system is that everyone feels that they have control and they're voting and they ha- have no power actually mm-hmm. and they just and it's difficult to tell them it's like when you say to someone like I'm against democracy they're like it's like you are saying that I'm pro Hitler <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes yes you are right but when you elaborate your idea of a better state Uh, you can convince others. Uh, we elaborated a, a better idea of democracy. And we have to do it in order to convince others what our uh, idea of the democracy of the future is. Hmm? I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts uh, also about the, about the the artificial intelligence stuff, yes. but let's leave that a bit uh, later. Let's go what we promised to the audience to dive into the Greek uh, history of philosophy. Okay. Um, the, the Greek history of philosophy is a long one. Uh, around uh, 10 centuries of thought. Uh, because we start with the pre-Socratic philosophers and we go on to uh, the Neoplatonians and uh, the philosophers um, who uh, were engaged in a Greek way of philosophical uh, thinking. From this point of view, 
Uh, Before in the world there is no philosophical no, emerge, no, no, no. At the same time in China uh, there were some philosophers, uh, but two and a half thousand years. Yes, ago. yes. Uh, but the Greek philosophy is the most elaborated one. Meaning, meaning that um, uh, Greek philosophers philosophize the, in every possible way. Uh, from then on, uh, we uh, we philosophize as uh, uh, philosophers of the theory of knowledge, uh, as philosophers of political philosophy, as philosophers of ethics. So they elaborated all these ways of philosophical thinking. And... Uh, uh, Contemporary philosophy for philosopher Whitehead uh, uh, told that all, all philosophy from Plato on uh, is um, references to Plato's philosophy. Hmm? Um, that's why I told you that Greek philosophers philosophized in every possible uh, way. And uh, philosophy, in definition, is identical identical, let's say, with Greek thinking. For the first time, uh, Greeks, uh, ancient times, philosophized uh, in a way that no nation uh, did uh, uh, till now. Uh, let's say philosophy is a Greek case. Of course, uh, we have uh, European philosophers, American philosophers, Chinese philosophers, but I am not really sure if Greeks at that old time, time uh, didn't philosophize, if anyone else could philosophize. Okay. French, British, or anyone else. So uh, how do we study the philosophers? Like, do you have books of them? Do we just have... Of uh, course, we have texts, philosophical texts. Two and a half years ago, we have... We ha it was 2005. Text. When text was invented in the... Uh, in well, well uh, 2,700 years uh, ago and earlier on, but w when we are talking about philosophical texts, texts of, um, let's say, the 5th century before Christ, we're talking about uh, texts that have survived, okay? And uh, we uh, discovered them from ancient writers of the 3rd, 2nd or 3rd thir uh, uh, centuries after Christ, okay? Uh, in those writers uh, of uh, the second of the third uh, century after Christ, uh, uh, the texts of um, Heraclitus and others uh, earlier on are to be found. Okay, they are the well-known doxographs, the writers who used to repeat, let's say, or to rewrite, or to write about the philosophical ideas of their predecessors, of the ancient philosophers. That's the way we, we, we have uh, uh, their ideas, their ideas uh, have survived. So, so how do you think they were, they were just like us in a society, just speaking with normal people on the street and trying to understand the nature of the world? Like, what do those people look yes, like? Yes, in, yes, they were interesting in every possible aspect of uh, their life and um, uh, personal as well as political one. And with their, they were very interested in the nature of uh, uh, their times because the nature, let's say, changes. Okay because of the technology. And um, uh, the ancient people uh, were technologically wise, let's say, smart people, uh, but uh, they were much closer to nature than us. From this point of view, they used to uh, think about nature and they ha had very fruitful ideas 
about the natural environment and they were making very wise observations and they were very very good mathematicians and um, they were trying to uh, mathematicize let's say the world hmm? uh, they were staring uh, the the stars up to the heaven and they were trying to to figure out what the structure of the universe is hmm? and they they were very very clever people and um, the uh, ability of thinking was very important for them uh, they didn't have let's say the personal uh, computers that we have now they, they they only had their mind to think yes okay and that's the difference between us and them from this point of view our ability our ability of thinking is much less um, important for us hmm? than it was for them yes so uh, it evolved to be a culture of philosophers and how it evolved now to Greece uh, the ne- after the tw- we started two and a half years ago it started the first philosophers and it evolved to uh, but and you said after 600 years they started to become more academic and the, those people that are more in in classes or something like uh, how and then how it evolved from there trying to really understand the evolution of philosophy yes yes uh, they were people that had uh, pupils they were teachers that had pupils and the teachers were becoming uh, the pupils their pupils were becoming teachers okay and uh, they they uh, left uh, texts that uh, were readable texts and uh, uh, much more uh, let's say educated people uh, were interested in them and they they were learning from uh, the uh, philosophers uh, texts uh, from this point of view uh, the philosophical tradition let's say is a tradition of people who think philosophically who are teachers of others uh, who become um, students or philosophers and propagate the ideas of their teachers uh, it's a very interesting tradition of thought interesting mm-hmm. uh, it's a tradition of thought that uh, is similar to the tradition the tradition of uh, of of arts mm-hmm. uh, let's say a master of music has pupils Uh, students and those students become masters the same uh, with um, ar- architecture or painting or sculpture it's the same with philosophy and who you think was the most important philosopher in greece well um, i cannot differentiate be- between them because uh, they have different styles I cannot tell the that. one you said is more about the nature and the beauty yes, yes. of the nature and uh, the other one is more about societal yes, problems. Yes, yes. And uh, they, they are as teachers they are different. Uh Heraclitus for me is a, is a, a master of philosophy. But Socrates as well. But as I told you earlier they are so different between them. They, they 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 are different philosophers. Also, they have 600 years of <laughs> yes, not not 600, 200, uh, 200 years okay. between them. Okay, from this point of view, we cannot discern be- between uh, uh, important and non-important philosophers. All of them are important. Uh, I mean, the classical philosophers, the philosophers that are known to us. All of them are, are important because. Uh, the, uh, each of them had his own way to philosophize each one had something has something to teach to us something different so interesting that it's 2500 years ago and we still talk about the yes yes, yes, like yes shocking 
Yes, because they are excellent teachers, because they are philosophers' teachers. And philosophy has a lot to do with teaching. Without uh, teaching philosophy, there is no philosophy at all. So you, you, they might not be the best philosopher ever lived, but they might be the best communicators of philosophy ever lived. The best communicators of philosophy ever lived. The, yes, original philosophers who, who, who knew very well the art of philosophizing and of communicating their philosophy. How do you think now Greece is a part of... Uh, Have the culture of philosophers, or do you think this faded away through the years? It, it's faded. Uh, it has faded away uh, through the years. Uh, I'm very sad <laughs> with this situation. <laughs> so there is not I like have, I have to admit, but uh, nothing like the past. Yes. So now people are not extra philosophizing because they feel they no, 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 not at all. Schools of philosophy. Not or... at all, not at all, not at all. Let's do something about it. Let's do something. Let's re- uh, we re- are re- doing something. Let's we're, revive the, <laughs> the Greek philosophical uh, tradition in Greece and Cyprus at least. <laughs> so uh, I, I think uh, we enter into the biggest topic uh, in the world. Artificial intelligence. Mm. What we're going to do about this huge threat, opportunity, beauty? Well, thanks to artificial intelligence, we are uh, sharing our discussion with our friends. And this discussion of ours is going to be shared through eternity. And this discussion of us will be transcribed by uh, an AI uh, machine that will listen and through text what we are saying now of course of course and how it will interpret it as it will interpret it with from this point of view artificial intelligence is a very useful tool but it's a tool Uh, you have to use it rightly wisely in order to be good as a tool if you don't use it wisely If it's something more wise than you, then uh, you are going to fail in uh, your, uh, let's say, um, trying to deal with it. It's going to deal with you and it's going to make you a slave, a man without original thinking, a man without, or a woman. Uh, um, a human being without being able to control his or her environment in a useful way, in a productive way. Everything is going to be done by creatures with artificial intelligence. And this is not right because those creatures are, are not in a position and they are not going to be in a position to Uh, fulfill our human needs. When when you think the singularity is coming, singularity meaning uh, uh, what singularity word means for the audience to understand is what, after that it's difficult for us to predict what will happen. Mm-hmm. So what by what age you predict? Like how many years you think this will take for for us to for the world to go crazy different? Yes, uh, I think uh, we are in a difficult position to predict because everything happens so quickly. Technology is changing our lives so quickly. From this point of view, uh, we, we cannot predict anything, uh, but we still have the ability to philosophize. We still have the ability to think deeply. And we have to use this ability before we lose it. And how do we exactly lose it? You lose it by not exercising it. And we, the world might evolve 
to a point that we are not going to be able to exercise it. Uh, Or it will be... I'm really afraid. Not useful. Oh, interesting. Yes, yes. So because everything will be spit out by the AI. Akrivos. That's right. So uh, we are going to... So there is no point to think deeply if all the problems are solved. Yes. Because... Uh, we are going to be told as we are being told now that you have not to uh, you you are not obliged to oh, think. let's enjoy that <laughs> <laughs> let's think. enjoy the philosophizing because yes yes <laughs> it's a so beautiful feeling to lose so let's enjoy the moment of <laughs> thinking deeply about the stuff. sharing of thoughts etc <laughs> the sharing of thoughts the yes So are you afraid of these things? Are you scared, you personally, or about the world? Like, uh... I'm not afraid, but I want to be careful with all this evolution. And um, I am being careful because I don't want to lose the feeling of controlling my thought. This feeling of controlling my thought is the ultimate, uh, let's say, hope of survival. Wow. <laughs> just, the, just the thinking of, th- of losing the, our thought process and our, like, this is crazy. This like, is crazy, yes. <laughs> and I don't think people ever got scared before in humanity. <laughs> yes. the whole humanity <laughs> we do not we do not deserve this future uh, this, to say we don't deserve is a big word deserve <laughs> who deserves and who does and yes you are right, and you are right. <laughs> but I want to be optimistic like you and uh, that's why I'm expressing myself this way so you personally what do you want to leave behind in this world Well, uh, let's say some thoughts that are going to be useful. How many books did you wrote? Well, uh, lots of them. There are, uh, How many? Uh, I have translated lots of uh, philosophical texts. I have written books on my own. I have uh, written uh, introductions to uh, books. Um, If you look at the internet, you may find... We're going to put the, uh, most of his books and some of his work in the de- description below for you guys to see or go buy it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, this is my way of uh, living, of passing my time. So you, are, you want to pass your yes, knowledge uh, w- through the next... The most important thing I want to, to leave behind me is this joy of philosophical thought. <laughs> okay, uh, this is what I am trying to do when I teach philosophy. This is what I am trying to do when I write. Okay, I want someone to 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 be happy when uh, he or she reads my books, uh, to be able to understand, and uh, I want philosophy to survive through my teaching and my books and my writings. This is what I do, and I am trying to do it the best way I can. So beautiful, so so beautiful, so pure, uh, beautiful. So I question that I ask in every podcast. I give you one trillion dollars. Yes. What do you do with them? With one trillion dollars? Yes. Uh, I... Uh, Uh, will organize uh, many, many philosophy universities around the world. <laughs> okay, elaborate, tell me more deeply. You go to Kenya, you start uh, like... Uh, I'm going to find uh, uh, Kenya people who are interested in philosophy, uh, who read philosophy, uh, probably who can teach philosophy. I am going to pay them in order to do this and nothing else. And do that across the world. Across the world, yes. One trillion, it's a lot of money, yeah? <laughs> it's a lot of money. So, because you've 
believe that your mission in life is to keep that spark of the philosophical thought and mm-hmm. that feeling that and that pleasure that it gave you and served you through all your life to pass that on to more people. Yes, yes. This is this is my mission, let's say. Beautiful. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm very surprised by our conversation. It was so beautiful. I enjoyed every single oh, second. I enjoyed it, it myself <laughs> very much. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.